Let's give a warm welcome to Pierre Calloc, the Chief Digital Officer of Pernod Ricard, the group that owns over 240 premium wine and spirit brands including Jameson, Shivers, Absolut and Havana Club, with a stellar background including an engineering degree from Ecole Polytechnique. He has been at the forefront of digital transformation throughout his career. From his early days at KPMG and Gerard Darrell to his current role at Pernod Ricard, he has consistently pioneered business innovation and harnessed the power of technology. As a chief digital officer he leads the charge in deploying cutting-edge data and AI solutions, empowering teams across the organization. Pierre firmly believes in the power of technology to create new opportunities, revolutionizing retail experiences and optimizing sales strategies. He has helped develop several AI tools at Pernod Ricard to aid in driving growth and achieving goals more effectively and efficiently. Welcome! Hello, uh, really excited to be uh, with you today, connected from Paris, where we have a beautiful sky this, uh, this afternoon. So in the next uh, nine minutes and 47 seconds, I will help you connect the dots between the nice bottles you can see on the screen, AI, the buzzword that uh, you might have heard today, uh, and our marketing investments. And for this, I will take the example of one of our brands, Jameson, which is a smooth, triple distilled Irish whiskey, which is present uh, already in 110 countries. And to sustain the growth of uh, this brand, we are investing every day of the year close to half a million euros every day. And this investment in marketing comes in different formats. It can be on your TV, out of home, a nice bar, maybe uh, next to your place, uh, your social media, the uh, supermarkets or convenience store that can be down your street, and of course on e-commerce. But the big questions we've had for years has been what is the business impact of each of these campaigns, each of these activations. And the good news is that uh, uh, in the past uh, three years, we've been developing and deploying a new tool that we've called uh, internally uh, matrix which is under the hood uh, calculating the nice uh, curves that you can see, which is called response curve, which determined, depending on how much we will spend in a given touch point, how much additional sales we will get. So how does it work? First, uh, we have developed a predictive sales impact module that takes about three years of history of sellout data, so the uh, sales of from the supermarkets to the consumers, from the bars to the consumers, on a weekly basis. We also get the data from our agencies on each week what campaign was impacting the consumers, either in a touch point in media or in the stores. This gives us the module that predicts the uh, actual impact that we will have if we activate one uh, or uh, another touch point. The second part we are putting into the model are what we have called long-term factors because we have different brand uh, priorities and also some consumer insights because we know from surveys that consumers sometimes prefer uh, to see uh, an ad on TV. It has a longer impact than on uh, digital. And the third factor we are putting in are the uh, business objectives. Let's say, for example, that uh, you're under budget currently, so a little struggling with the, the sales. You might want to push the uh, touch points that will give you an immediate additional sales. Now, if you're over budget, which is a nice place to be uh, currently, you might want, on the contrary, to push touch points that will uh, develop your market share that will build for the long term. And so these are the different inputs that the marketeers in our teams are putting into the tool. And then they receive precise recommendations of the recommended level of spend per brand. So for example, for Jameson or for another brand, Absolute. And for each of the brand, for each of the touch points, whether you should invest more in TV, more in social media, and giving the exact weights, which are the optimal uh, to get to the results that was input. 
So when you develop these kind of uh, tools, which seems a little magical uh, at the beginning, uh, you are wondering, is it working? So the first way to know whether it's working, it's about measuring the adoption. And the adoption is not just the number of people which are using the tool. It's actually seeing that you have a change of pattern on investment, a change of decisions taken by the team. And here you can see the example in the US for Jameson of the shift between 2019 and 2021. And you can see that in two years, we had a significant shift. For example, TV gaining uh, significant space and social uh, increasing and event not being uh, as efficient uh, were uh, deprioritized. And it took two years because the first year, the marketeers thought that was a bold move. But then when they saw the result after year one, they decided to go uh, full on with the recommendations uh, from the from the tool. How do we get a precise measure of how it works. So it's not just about the shift, but also the additional result that you want. And I can tell you that we have multiplied by more than two the additional sales we are generating directly from advertising. Now, what is important to get that adoption? One of the parameters is called explicability is the fact of being able to avoid what's called the black box effect when you know only the input you're putting into an AI model and see the output, not knowing what's happening in the middle. And on the contrary, when you have explicability, you are able to say what parameter was influencing what and explaining everything to the final users. And this is what we've done, and this is our hero team. Uh, for example, you have Annabelle uh, sitting on the sofa uh, on the on the left, um, and she's the contact for the US, for Poland, for Bulgaria in the future, when the users are having a question on why your recommendation is coming in, and this is super important for the adoption. And so we have a full explicability on all our models. The other part which is important where you're a big international group with the right portfolio is that what you are doing in the US on one brand, Jameson, also applies to all your portfolio because you want a consistent way of applying those rules of new ways of working across a portfolio of brands. And what applies in the US, uh, you want it to apply in a quite similar way to the other countries in the in the world, which will help internationally the brands to see their performance and understand their levels. And this is what we've done in uh, Pernod Ricard because we are currently rolling out uh, this tool. Uh, we've we have 15 countries live, and we have uh, five more countries which are currently currently being rolled out to have a maximum coverage of the tool. So if I'm wrapping up uh, this uh, quick session, uh, the success factors that you need to plan from day one are about uh, the adoption. So you need to plan to involve all the people that will use the tool from the beginning in the design, for example. You need the explicability so that people feel confident about the result they are giving and being more bold in the changes of behaviors. And you need to plan from the beginning for the scalability because uh, the risk you're having is that the model will work only in one country so what we did actually is that we piloted in two countries uh, for each of the programs we have developed uh, you've seen the one on marketing but we have another one on uh, sales or on uh, promotions and you need to plan these factors from day one why because if you start just with a proof of concept not planning for the expansion in the beginning you're not as bold you don't plan for all the things I've been uh, mentioning, but also you don't plan for the success and the success will be the key factor to actually get the success. So planning for success will get you to the success because what will drive such projects, which are quite expensive to, uh, to deploy, will be the return on investment, which is the difference between the success, so the value you're generating and the cost that include all the elements I've been uh, mentioning. So I hope uh, you will have a lot of inspiration uh, today from uh, the different speakers, uh, identify the right topics on which uh, to invest and deploy as we've been doing at scale such uh, programs and making a lot of uh, users uh, in your teams, whether it's marketing in sales, it could be in finance, much more confident about taking decisions which are supported by data. So enjoy the rest of the day uh, in Sofia. I hope you will have a good drink tonight with one of our brands and I'm wishing you a good rest of the day. Cheers.